Hey guys and welcome to uh, tutorial number two. In this one we're going to be having a look at how to place a wood texture on both the floor and the ceiling. So the best and first thing to do is always to make sure that your layers are correctly named. So on the right hand side you can see that our wood texture floor, uh, we're going to select that and also make sure that it is visible. Okay, so remember that we have to click on the icon to see uh, to make sure that we can see it and also make sure you click on the actual wording so that we're on the correct layer. You don't want to be doing or moving anything on the incorrect layer. So then go across and we're going to select the arrow tool and uh, if you just click and drag you'll notice that the texture appears um, when you're moving it and this is because your original image layer is above your wood texture floor. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag that down to the bottom so that way our uh, texture floor is uh, is above it. And one of the really uh, good good ways or good tools to use um, is the opacity tool. So we can uh, decrease it to uh, 50% and you'll see that we can see straight through the texture and that, that way we can move it around um, while still seeing the image underneath. But for the moment we're going to uh, just put it back to 100% so we can uh, keep going with our tutorial. Now this uh, this image, this texture isn't quite big enough for our uh, for our space so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to duplicate this layer so that we can create an identical uh, wood floor like this one. So if you uh, right click and uh, duplicate layer at the top there. This will uh, click OK um, when the dialog box appears and this is going to create a copy of the uh, of the layer that we started with. So if you uh, just click and drag on your wood texture to the left hand side we have replicated that image. So as you can notice with the two images joined together we happen to have this dark panel in the middle and we want to get rid of it. So the best way to do that is to uh, get the marquee tool and we're going to uh, draw a rectangle around that area so that our image when we place it into the perspective is going to look realistic. So select the marquee tool and draw a rectangle around the area that we want to get rid of and then simply press delete. Okay so we're on the copy layer so because we're only on one layer it will only uh, delete one side of it like you can see. So make sure that you swap to the other layer before pressing delete. Okay, so to get rid of your marching ants, what you can do is you can just right click with your mouse and it'll bring up a little menu bar and uh, what you want to do is just press deselect. Otherwise you can uh, just press uh, command D to deselect as well. Okay, so now that we have uh, two uh, samples of our uh, wood floor, what we want to do is join them together before we actually merge those two layers together. So make sure that you have the arrow tool selected, hold down the shift button and simply drag it. Holding the shift key down will um, make sure that it doesn't move up and down. And then uh, select the two, two layers, uh, right click and then we're going to merge layers. And you'll, you'll notice that both of those layers have gone into one. And then uh, what we can do is uh, when you move this image, it's all one image now. You don't have those two separate images. But we want to rename our file again, so we don't want to have copy at the end, so just backspace and delete the copy. So that way we still have the wood texture floor. Okay, so what we want to do now is establish a perspective uh, with the timber flooring going into our image. So to do that, we want to make sure that we're on the uh, correct layer first and then we're going to go Command T for the free transform function and then we're going to right click and we're going to hit distort. Okay. So once you've done that, find an anchor point or one of the corners and uh, line it up with, uh, with one of the edges and then you want to click and drag on the other, on the other corner. Okay. So use your navigator again to zoom out just so you can see the entire image and drag one of the other corners like we're, like we're showing you now just so that you can start to see the perspective okay so picture that, vanish, picture that vanishing point um, and 
tweak it until you feel comfortable um, that it looks right or use a line that's already previously uh, in the image um, to match, especially with timber flooring, match one of those lines up. So uh, do that until you're happy um, and then once you're happy with that, just click OK or sorry, enter. Now, as you can see, Underneath the uh, the window there, you can see a, a little line. Now, because of the perspective of the shot, what we can do is we can just uh, touch using your arrow keys um, up and down. So it allows the, the sample to go up and down. And as you can see, um, it still looks okay by doing that. We then want to work on the ceiling. Because the ceiling has the exact same perspective, all we want to do is click on the floor layer, right click, and we're going to duplicate that layer, okay? So right click, duplicate layer, and we're going to change it so it says wood texture ceiling, okay? And then we're going to create this layer, and uh, like what happened earlier, it's going to create that, um, that second sample. So there's two steps that we want to take um, to achieve uh, the perspective. So we want to right click again, and we want to rotate 180 degrees firstly. That's the first step, okay? So once we've done that, you need to right click again and we're going to flip horizontal. Okay, now then you can just uh, click and drag up to the ceiling. And again, we're going to use the same transform and distort uh, function that we did for the flooring. So remember, C Command T uh, to bring the function up. And then we are going to right click uh, and uh, click distort. So remember, use that anchor point again um, and just tweak that until you can see that the line and the angle uh, are matching up. Um, use the space bar to, um, to, to get the hand tool. Um, and then you can just drag out as far as you need to. Now we've got a bit of a shadow line that we're wanting to keep. So you can use that as a, as a starting point. Um, and then just, just keep tweaking backwards and forwards until you are comfortable with what you've done. And then when that's finished, just press enter. Okay, so the last thing that we want to do uh, for this tutorial um, before we wrap it up is just to create some boundary lines on our original image because as you can see um, with the other textures uh, that we've applied to this image it, it's a little bit hard to see where our original rectangle is um, and because our original image is one of the bottom layers it's harder to see as well. So the best thing to do is to create some guides. Um, so if you go up to the view uh, menu and you scroll down and just have a look at where it says rulers you'll see that we've had it ticked. Um, these are generally already there when you start an open Photoshop up but the easiest way to use them is just to simply drag down to where you uh, want to use it and just release it and it will uh, create a blue line you can change this color. So they're along the top uh, and also on the left so just simply uh, drag and drop them. Now the other line on the bottom is a little bit harder to see uh, so we're going to use that technique of the opacity tool that we uh, talked about earlier. So make sure that you're on the floor layer and we're going to change the opacity down to 50 so that we can see through to the original image. Now go up to the top ruler and simply drag down until it matches the bottom line of your image. You can then increase your opacity back up to 100%. Then go across to your left ruler and just finally place your last guide in. And now as you can see we have a really clear, clear definition of our image and this is going to help so much um, when it comes to cropping our image later. And again use the navigator um, so we can zoom in to see our image um, and that's it.